Gorinch has covered a lot there, but there's a lot more to discuss. And to do that, talk about the World Bank IMF meetings. We're joined now by Nicholas Economides. He is a professor of economics at the NYU Stern School of Business. Good to have you with us again. Always nice to see you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, now, arguably the most important issue that is going to be debated among the legions of people attending this gathering, the global economy. Where do you think it's heading and what are the pratfalls? Well, the United States is doing pretty well. Uh, hopefully China will do better. And hopefully the, uh, the European Union will do better. The European Union has significant problems uh, of a slowdown. Um, we'll see. Uh, a lot depends on uh, the United States uh, elections. Sure. Yeah, that, that's the elephant in the room, and we'll discuss that a little more in depth in just a second. But I also want to talk about uh, something we just heard mentioned, the global conflicts that continue to rage, with little sign that there's any kind of meaningful discussion uh, looming out there that could silence the weapons, Ukraine and Russia, and obviously the growing lightning rod that is the Middle East. It is threatening the global economy in so many ways. What are the concerns, and to what degree do you think so many other nations are simply frustrated watching this unfold? Well, the way I, the way I see it is that the Middle East conflict has a, a lot more uncertainty connected with it than uh, the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict. Uh, we don't really know uh, if all the players in the Middle East are going to get involved. And additionally, players that nobody ever counted, like the Houthis, are shooting missiles at the, at the passing commercial ships. So this stuff is, is hard um, and should really not have happened. And I'm afraid that it's happening because of the weakness of the American administration mm. as it comes to its end. Uh, but I do, I am optimistic that no matter who gets elected as president in the United States, there would be significant efforts to contain the conflict uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, okay, we've danced around it. Let's dig right into it. We, we have to talk about the U.S. Uh, presidential race coming up. If it is chaotic in the aftermath or during the election, or if somehow if it goes off without a hitch, there is massive potential to upset the international apple cart, meaning more tariffs and a lot of uncertainty for the global economy. Uh, what do you think people are talking about at the IMF World Bank gathering? Well, I think that uh, you have two candidates with pretty much opposing uh, visions. Uh, I see Kamala Harris as having uh, a vision which is based on the redistribution, not so much on growth, not so much on incentives for growth. Uh, and uh, I'm afraid that the, if that, if, if she gets elected, the growth in the United States will diminish and we will see much more redistribution of wealth. Now, if Trump gets elected, he's most likely to keep taxes low or even cut them further. He will give incentives for production, uh, especially natural gas and oil. Um, and he won't pay so much attention to redistribution. Uh, now, is he going to impose tariffs, as uh, is rumored? Uh, who knows? <laughs> I think many people promise a whole bunch of stuff before the elections and then don't do them. We will see. Um, we will see what ha what's going to happen with uh, with tariffs. I, I think some economists would say that's a pretty rosy outlook, and uh, I want to dig a deeper into that, too, because from all the information I've read, if Trump continues to move forward with his economic plans, it could raise the U.S. debt by another $11 trillion. And if he does have tax cuts, it could be for the most wealthy, leading to a greater disparity in wages and earnings and, and, and economic standing here in the United States and a potential to foster a lot more trouble, whereas economists also point out that you may call it redistribution, but uh, Kamala Harris's economic plans right now don't call for any kind of measures that would burden uh, the debt to the degree that Trump's plans would. Well, the crucial thing, in my opinion, is uh, which measures increase growth. Redistribution doesn't. So Trump has a better chance of increasing growth. Now, you may be correct that if there is all the stuff that is being offered to people in the, in the pre-election speeches, if all these things are being uh, implemented, then uh, 
there will be big, very big deficits. And I think it would be essential for the United States to cut its expenditure. I mean, this, there is another way, except increasing taxes, there right. is another way to balance the budget, and that's not to spend so much money. Uh, and we have been spending in the United States much more than we used to. Yeah, live so beyond its means. There's a possibility for that. Okay, let's talk about the world's second largest economy. China has implemented a host of stimulus measures in recent weeks. And in part, the plans have worked, bolstering markets, but still China's housing concerns are threatening its economic future, and Chinese domestic consumption just hasn't lived up to what the government has been hoping for. President Xi does have this desire for higher quality manufacturing, more innovative output, and that has the potential to be a real game changer for Chinese economy, putting it on stable ground for solid growth down the road. Well, I, I think that uh, China, given its situation, uh, may need uh, more uh, stimulus. It's, it's kind of hard to say from outside how much stimulus it needs. I mean, people who are in power know exactly how the economy is doing and will be able to fashion the stimulus to the extent that is necessary. I, I think it's hard to predict from outside uh, how much more stimulus the, US, the, mm. sorry, the Chinese economy might need. Okay. So at the same time, the World Bank and IF meeting, IMF meetings are going on, so are the recently expanded nations that make up BRICS. Economists are noting this and also pointing out that it could represent a growing economic and geopolitical divide. BRICS is making progress on a Russian idea to create, and we talked about it, an alternative to the international payment system, the SWIFT system. Uh, that is and always been backed by the IMF. Do you think this shows a growing divide and dissatisfaction with a tension uh, from the World Bank and the IMF? I think a lot of countries are pretty happy with the, with the present uh, uh, system of exchanges and uh, ancillary mechanisms of changing or uh, moving money. Uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, Russia has uh, the sanctions and right. has been cut off from uh, that international system uh, that we are used to, and it, itself with Russia was part of. So uh, given the circumstances, it's crucially important for Russia to have an alternative um, mechanism of changing money. And if the money gets changed in a different way and not in the traditional way, it will help tra tremendously uh, Russia. I think that the other countries involved probably don't have so much to gain. Mm. They might gain marginally, but they won't gain much. Uh, Russia has a lot to gain from that change at, the, at present. 